In this video, we're going to learn about a debugging and programming technique called commenting out code. And this video is part of a series of videos on tips and tricks for beginner programmers. We'll use Python for the examples in this video, but in virtually all languages, the primary purpose of a comment is to document the code. So this comment here is documenting that this statement here is converting a temperature from Celsius to Fahrenheit. But comments also have this nice property that anything inside the comment is not going to be considered code. So right now, if we save this program and run it, we'll get the converted temperature. But if we put a number sign in front of this call to the print function here, that's going to turn this into a comment. So even though this is valid Python code, it's no longer going to execute because it's now part of a comment. So if we save the program now and run it, we'll get nothing. So we've used the comment to essentially turn off a section of code, but the code is still physically there too. So if we just remove this comment, we can turn back on this section of code. We can save the program and run it, and we'll get the converted temperature again. So what we've just done is called commenting out code. Commenting out code can be a very useful debugging technique because we can search for the cause of a bug by turning off parts of our code. We can also use commenting out code to try out different ways of implementing things. If we have some code that's working to solve some problem, we can temporarily comment it out while we try something out that could be better. And if it doesn't work, we still have the original code saved in the comment. Let's go over an example. Let's create a program to count how many times a user's lucky number occurs in a predefined list of numbers. So we'll have here our predefined list of numbers. We'll have numbers is equal to, and we'll have maybe seven, eight, four, five, six, one, eight, nine, three, four, five, six, seven. Then we'll prompt the user to enter their lucky number. We'll call the input function and we'll pass it the string lucky number to prompt the user to enter their lucky number. Then we'll store their lucky number into a variable called lucky number. Then we'll make a variable called total to store the total number of times the lucky number occurs in the list of numbers. So we'll have total is equal to zero initially. Then we'll make a loop that's going to loop through our list of numbers. We'll have four number in numbers. And this loop is going to run for each number in this list. And each time it does, number is going to be set to the next number in the list. Then we'll have an if statement. We'll have if the number is equal to the lucky number, then we're going to add one to total. So if the lucky number has been found in the list, we're going to increment total by one. Then down here, we'll output total. We'll have print and total colon. To output the text total colon, followed by the value in the total variable. So now if we save the program and try it out, we could enter in a lucky number of seven and we'll get here a total of zero, but that's incorrect because seven occurs twice in this list. So this is where we could use the commenting out code technique to explore where the bug could be occurring. We might think that the bug could be occurring in the loop. What we could do is comment out this code here, comment out the if statement. And what we'll do is increment total by one every single time the loop runs. If we save the program and run it and enter in a lucky number of seven, then we'll get a total of 13, which looks like the length of our list. So it looks like this loop is running for each number in the list, and the problem is not the loop. So we've narrowed the problem down. Now we could uncomment this code, and we could delete our code change here. Then we might next speculate that the cause of the problem could be the lucky number. So what we'll do is comment out this line of code, and we're going to hard code the lucky number to the value seven. So we'll have lucky number is equal to seven. Now, if we save the program and run it, we'll get a total of two, which is correct. And now we have further narrowed down the cause of the bug. We know the bug has something to do with this line here. At this point, because we've narrowed the problem down, we might be able to spot it. If we can't, we could use other debugging techniques. So for example, there's something called print debugging, where we try to output things to identify what the bug could be. So maybe what we'll do is comment out this and uncomment this. 
And what we'll do is output the lucky number to see if the lucky number is what's expected. So we'll have here print and we'll output the lucky number. We'll have print and maybe lucky number colon and then we'll output the lucky number. We'll save the program and try it out now. And if we run it and enter in a lucky number of seven, we'll get here lucky number is seven. So it seems like the number is correct. Maybe it's the type. We could then output the type of the lucky number. So we'll have here print and we'll have type and we'll pass type lucky number. Now, if we save the program and try it out and enter in a lucky number of seven, we'll get here class str, which tells us lucky number is a string. So now we've really narrowed down the problem. The problem is the type of lucky number. These here are integer values, but this lucky number is a string. So this comparison here is not going to work. So now we can fix the bug. What we'll do is take the string returned by the input function and convert it to an int with the int function here. That's going to turn that string into an int value. Now, if we save the program and try it out and enter in a lucky number of seven, we'll get a total of two, which is correct. So here we've used the commenting out code technique to help narrow down and fix a bug. Now we could also use the commenting out code technique to explore alternative implementations. So for example, we might've heard that there's a list method in Python called count, which can be used to count the occurrences of a value in a list. Right now, our for loop is doing that. But what we could do is comment out this for loop temporarily and try out this other approach. So instead of total being equal to zero, we'll set total equal to numbers.count to call the count method. And we'll supply the count method with the lucky number as an argument. We can save our program and try it out and enter in a lucky number of seven and we'll get here two, which is correct. And we could say this approach here is better because we're using a built-in method instead of reinventing the wheel and it's only one line of code instead of three. So at this point, we could delete the original implementation and go with this alternative approach. So this is how we can use the commenting out code technique to help debug our code and explore alternative implementations. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.